Hello guys and welcome to Freebird Screw. And uh, in this video, I will tell you about the logistic regression. In our past videos, we completely discussed about the linear regression and decision trees. So let's start with the logistic regression. So why we need logistic regression? So logistic regression is required because it can handle the non-linear data with ease. Okay, it is used to predict the discrete number of classes. So if your target variable has a, a discrete number of classes as well, then you can apply the logistic regression there. Okay, it is just an advanced version of linear regression with added activation function to it. Okay, so if we just add activation function to the li linear regression, then it is called as logistic regression. Okay, so we can use the logistic regression to predict this kind of uh, data that you see example on the screen. So in that example, we have this kind of uh, uh, data where y is, is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So in that kind of data, linear regression will not work. Okay, so we need to skew the line so, so that it can be easily fit to the data as well. So to just bend the line to according to the data, we need an activation function. When we pass our linear uh, regression to the activation function, then we get the logistic regression. Okay, and then you see here, this line perfectly fits to the data as well. Okay, so, so, so now, how actually logistic regression works okay so i explain that it has the uh, advanced version of uh, linear regression but how it actually works okay so it actually works by the same method as the linear regression okay it has the independent uh, variables as well it has the uh, target variable as well it predicts the uh, probability at the end so as in the linear regression we get a continuous response but in the logistic regression we get a dis discrete response okay so how like uh, what makes the logistic regression different from the linear regression and that is the activation function okay so the predicted response value that the response value which it predicts from the mathematical equation okay it passed to the activation function that is called as sig sigmoid function Okay, and that is the equation of that sigmoid function. So when it predicts the probability of a value and then the probability value is passed to that sigmoid function, it can decide that whether it will be mapped to 1 or whether it will be mapped to 0. Okay, the sigmoid function has S shape curve. Okay, because of that S shape curve, it is called as sigmoid function and it is give, given by this mathematical formula that is 1 by 1 plus e upon minus z okay and uh, now the question actually comes that how do you decide the threshold above which you can get the probability as 1 and below 0 okay because you get the probability value you pass that pro probability value to the sigma function it can map that value to the 0 and 1 but what is the threshold okay so the threshold to map this probability value to a discrete class 0 or 1 true or false yes or no we select a threshold value and that threshold value is called decision boundary okay above this threshold value we will map the probability values into class 1 and below that value we can map the values to the uh, class 0 okay mathematically we, we can like take a threshold value of 0 0.5 okay so the probability value which we get if that is above 0 0.5 then we can mark it as class 1 and below we can mark it as class 2 you can also adjust these uh, this uh, threshold value according to your problem statement okay now what actually is this uh, decision boundary okay so this decision boundary is generally it is set to 0 0.5 so if we get a probability value greater than 0 0.5 it is we can say it is uh, 1 and if it is below then we can say it is 0 okay it is actually a kind of a, a boundary to your uh, sigmoid s curve and then what are the assumptions of the logistic regression okay so we also know the assumptions of linear regression as well so the it can be very similar 
ओके सो द लॉजिक रेशन रिक्वायर्स द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल टू बी बाइनरी मल्टीनोमियल और ऑर्डिनल इन नेचर ओके इट रिक्वायर द ऑब्जेशन टू बी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ईच अदर सो देर शुड बी अ नो प्रॉब्लम ऑफ मल्टी कोलिनियरिटी ओके एंड द लॉजिक रेशन ऑल्सो ज्यूम द लिनियरिटी ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स एंड द लॉग वर्ड्स ओके एंड द सक्सेस ऑफ दिस डिपेंड्स ऑनली ऑन द सैम्पल साइज इट रिक्वायर्स अ वेरी लार्ज सैम्पल साइज टू अचीव द हाई एक्यूरेसी ओके सो दीज एजम्शन आर क्लियरली सिमिलर टू द लीनियर रिग्रेशन एज वेल बट द डिफरेंस ऑनली कम्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल सो इन द लीनियर रिग्रेशन वी हैव कॉन्टिन्यूस डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल बट इन दिस वी हैव अ डिस्क्रीट डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल ओके एंड देन वट आर द लाइक डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लॉज रिग्रेशन So, the last one is of three types. The first is binary, and the second is multinomial. Third is ordinal. So, the binary we can know it is true, false, good, bad, and uh, yes or no, spam or not spam. Okay, these are the like binary plus regression target variables. But what about the multinomial? Multinomial is called type of categories we have, like the the type of fruits, type of vegetables. Okay, these are like different different types of uh, things we can add in the multinomial logic regression and then is ordinal so ordinal actually uh, goes to a kind of a performance wise uh, category values okay so that can be like poor average good excellent so these are actually the ordinal values so if we have to predict this kind of problem statement then we have to apply the ordinal logic regression uh, that's all from this uh, video so if you guys like this video please like subscribe and share and also comment down your views and in our next video we'll work on a binary logic regression project okay and in that i will completely explain all the data analysis along with the uh, binary logic regression machine learning model thank you guys thank you we'll meet in our next video